from SF Land, this is Dorking Out, a podcast for people who love to dork out about movies, TV, and everything pop culture. Welcome to Dorking Out. My name is Sonia Mansfield, and I'm listening to Mozart's Ghost, the hottest band on the internet. Joining me is my podcasting sister from another mister and the co-host of Dorking Out, Margot D. Hello, my friend. My friend, do not touch the escape key. <laughs> Whatever you do. Don't touch it. Don't hit that one key. It'll ruin everything. We are dorking out about 1995's The Net, starring Sandra Bullock, Jeremy Northam, when, back when he was a thing, and Dennis Miller. Remember when Hollywood thought Dennis Miller was going to be a movie star? <laughs> LOL. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bad. By the way, I mean, it's just, I mean, as an actor. Yeah. I, yeah. Mm, I think he's a little. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about that. Yeah. Um. Th- yeah. This movie was, if you guys don't know what it is, Sandra Bullock's like a cybersecurity specialist. Um, and this is before like the internet was like really, really a thing. So the technology in this movie is, I'm going to say dated. Do you think it's dated? Just a little. It's just a tad. <laughs> who kind of uncovers like a, a crazy program that lets you hack into any mainframe. Um, it's also, I'm sure everyone knows the USA network TV show, the net, but they probably don't remember. It was a movie first with Sandra Bullock. And of course I'm kidding. Um, everyone knows that Sandra Bullock movie and nobody knows the USA. Network yeah. TV I was show. just going to say. <laughs> <laughs> so did you see this movie in the theater? I absolutely did see this movie in Me the too. theater. I liked Sandra Bullock, and yeah. she made some good movies. And she was just—I find her very charming. And I, you know, I like me those '90s thrillers. Yeah, I thought they were great. I thought they were fun. I didn't understand it then. I don't understand it now. I, you might have to explain the plot to me. Mm, I, I look we'll at see. this like I. Well, <laughs> okay, because it's like. You know, Lord of the Rings, I don't understand what's going on, but it's extremely enjoyable and visually yes. interesting. That's not what's happening here. No. No. Yeah. It's um I saw this movie in the theater too because like you, I super love Sandra Bullock. She is one of those rare movie stars for me where I instantly care about her no matter mm-hmm. who she's playing and like her and don't want bad things to happen to her. So in that way the net is kind of a perfect movie for her. Because I instantly, I'm like, if anything happens to Sandra Bullock, I'm going to be pissed. Like, I don't <laughs> like it. Um, but this movie is all over the place. It's all over yes. the place. And there's things where I was like, I don't understand how these things are related. I There is like very, it would make a good double feature with uh, another one of our past episodes, Disclosure. <laughs> but Disclosure is <laughs> way more enjoyable and rewatchable. <laughs> I, think, I defend disclosure. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is very rewatchable. I think this one really just rides on Sandra Bullock. Like, if you super love Sandra Bullock, you will probably find this a little bit more watchable than. But if you want to see her yeah. run in the same outfit oh up and down California, <laughs> I wrote in my notes she does so much running in this movie. I wrote <laughs> that they would, the bad guys would catch me after thirty seconds because I'd yeah, be like, exactly. I don't, I don't want to run anymore. It's not worth it. Here, here, destroy the world. <laughs> I'm like, I can't run. <laughs> it's too much. Um, but I do think there's some things in the movie that actually do hold up. So maybe we'll just go through it and and we could talk about it. Okay. Okay, cool. So <laughs> the movie starts with one of the things that I already don't understand. The Secretary of Defense is on the phone with someone. I don't know if it's explicitly said because maybe I missed it, but he is diagnosed with HIV. Mm -hmm. Is it said on the phone call that he has HIV? Yes, because I watch it with captions. Okay, sorry. Yeah. And then he kills himself. Right, because he's a homophobe, apparently. Okay. Um, I don't know. I, I don't think there was... Is he a homophobe because he's like a closeted homosexual? Or like, how does he... I, I don't know. Right, because he kills himself, and so then it turns out that the test was false, that he yeah. didn't have it, 
but he always voted against AIDS things. But you can get HIV from an operation or something. Yeah, or, you know what I mean? It, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. So that's a, it instantly starts off where I'm like, what the? F like, I had forgotten all of that stuff, of course. Mm -hmm. Really, all I remember about the movie is like some of the technology and Sandra Bullock running. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I don't remember this part about a dude killing himself because he has HIV. But that's how the movie opens. And I'm like, okay. Then we cut to Sandra Bullock's Angela um, sitting at her very cool and modern, like, dual monitor setup, um, <laughs> playing a video game and ordering a pizza online. Ordering a pizza <laughs> online! <laughs> From orderpizza.net. Yeah. Dot net. <laughs> and I and love she how she orders or a gross pizza too. I know. She puts anchovies on it, right? And garlic. Yeah, I like that, garlic. No wonder but you're the, single. Yeah, exactly. That's that's why she's <laughs> always alone. <laughs> but I love how she orders the pizza because it's not like she just like checks a box that says anchovies. It's like dragging the anchovies onto <laughs> the pizza. It's like very like a video game, basically. But we all order pizza online now, so in that way, the net yes. was ahead of its time. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I wrote in my notes, looks like a pretty great Friday night to me, to be honest. But I think we're supposed to feel sorry for her that she's lonely. and. Yeah, she's, well, she's supposed to be, so she's in, she's a cute house in Venice, California. Yeah. Uh, but here's this, here's immediately, like, her, she has a mother, but the mother has Alzheimer's. Yeah. She doesn't have any relationship with her father. She works remotely, which was like unusual, I guess, for the time. So she works with people, but she doesn't, they don't know what she looks like. Right. And, and so they're in San Francisco. She's in Southern California. And we're supposed to think like she's this shut in, like she just lives in her home, doesn't talk to anybody. She sits in a chair with two computers every day. Yes. But she's slim and she's tan. <laughs> And she has she, she's Sandra really Bullock. nice hair. She's Sandra Bullock. She's got really nice hair. Like when they take, eventually when they take away her identity, it's like she, the whole thing is she doesn't know anybody. And it's like, where does she get that hair color? Cause it's a great color. Yeah. She didn't do it on her own. I'm like, why didn't does they, her teeth? Why didn't they contact pizza net? Yeah, pizza. What about the pizza driver? Does she not tip him? I mean, is that why? I mean, I don't, I, it's, we're meant to think, to know that she's completely alone in the world and she's a shut in. Yeah. She just likes to be online and it's that dial up. Yeah. Ring. <laughs> I love that she, she also spends time in a chat room and yes. um, she reads all of her chats out loud, you know, yes. like a normal person does when they're in a chat room, they just read um, whatever you're typing. You just read it out loud. Right. I do well, that, you should sure. because then you won't make mistakes. But that's the reason we don't. <laughs> that's how we always make spelling errors because we just do it really fast. And then she's got this like, you know, speaker on the computer that reads other people's chats out loud in this like really creepy computer voice. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. And her mother has Alzheimer's and doesn't remember her. And apparently, she never interacts with any kind of nurses or anything. <laughs> No, the, she has a neighbor across the street who seems like a perfectly nice woman and she just gives her a look of terror when they see each other yeah. across the, the woman's kind of be like hey how you doing you know it's southern california people are very friendly down there i mean you would say hi to your neighbors but right. she it, doesn't there's a lot in this movie that her working alone in her house at the time was super weird and now, of course, right now in particular, it's the new normal. Right. We're all like working from home, but also just remote working is way more common now in general. But at the time, it was super unusual. Um, and having this much technology uh, knowledge was also super unusual. And now that's also a little bit more common. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, we're just going to have to remember, uh, remember that throughout. She... I love it. So she spends a lot of time on the internet, but they're still using a lot of FedEx and they're, e they're like FedExing each other like discs, floppy discs. Discus. Yeah, discus <laughs> with uh, viruses and things like that. And she gets one and she puts it in and it's Mozart's ghost. <laughs> God is banned on the internet. And she's like, looks normal to me. But then she finds this little like pie symbol in the corner and it turns out it's like, a, like a backdoor, like secret entrance 
to like a wireframe that hacks into like can hack into any uh website basically and it's all run by like this secret we find out spoilers for the net y'all uh, <laughs> that it's like all connected to this big company called the gatekeeper security that like everybody's using and they're getting like more and more access which i don't know seems a little facebooky to me seems a little relevant to be yeah. honest um there's also a lot of stuff in the movie about privacy and living your life online and the access that people have to your information. And I'm like, that that also is relevant, I think. Sure. And and yeah, so she uh, so she mails this, she sends by FedEx this diskette with a virus in it because she has a friend that collects viruses, which that also I'm sure was a thing. I'm sure yeah. that was, yeah. But there's a guy that she talks to in San Francisco. And he's like, I got some shit to talk to you about, like, but we can't do it over the phone. I'm going to fly my plane, little Cessna down to you. And she just happens to be leaving the next day for her first vacation in six years. Yes. So she's like, well, you got to be here first thing in the morning. And he's like, I'll do it right now. So he leaves that night and his plane crashes into a building. Yes. So she just leaves for the airport thinking he just stood her up, whatever. And she goes and she's uh, on the beach, of course, with her laptop. <laughs> like any good nerd. Like any, any good, good techie. Yes. And a guy that orders a drink like that's very similar to a drink that she likes. Yes. And it's because and it's Jeremy, Jeremy Northam. He's very handsome. Yes, he is very uh, handsome. Super handsome and se- very sexy and has an English accent and all that the good shit that women like. Mm-hmm. And he, <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know, shorthand in movies, like mm-hmm. give him a British accent. The girl will go crazy for it. Um, so they go, he woos her to, and basically says to her all the things that she likes in the world yeah. because he's been watching her on chat r- rooms. She doesn't know that. Right. But so when he woos her, they have sex. They go on a boat. They have sex on the boat. And then he goes upstairs in the boat. She wakes up and she, and she notices that he has they have this weird cuddling scene yeah where they're talking about breakfast at tiffany's and he says i was always the cat like, yeah what it's so like, weird that's the guy said that to weird. me i'd be i'd jump off that boat i'd He's be out of there a, but... it, it seems like something like a guy would say to sound like deep to a lady yeah. you know yeah it's the same was... when like dudes are like my favorite movie is amelie and blah, blah. i'm like uh, yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> like, it's like, like I like Amelie too, but like I feel like it's something dudes just say to impress chicks. I'm like, I don't know if it's really a dude's favorite movie. That's all I'm saying. Right. Sorry if it's your favorite movie. <laughs> <laughs> I I wanted to say one more thing about Mozart's Ghost because I wrote it in my notes. Oh please! I was like, not only is the website like super ugly, um, it also has autoplay, and I wrote no. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like web page websites that have autoplay are like the worst thing ever. I'm like, I hope she recommends that they fix that. And it's an and ugly the, site. Yeah, and the virus that you know can infect everybody and hacks into private sites, but also no autoplay. Bad, 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 bad. Right. Yeah. So they have they have their weird cuddling. They have a weird cuddling session, and I forgot to mention just before that they're walking on the beach and. He base he pays somebody to kind of steal her purse. Yes. So he he chases after the guy, and then he turns on. It turns out he has a silencer, a gun with a silencer, and shoots the guy. He was going to pay him off. So we know he's a bad guy. But yes. then he takes her out the boat. They have the weird cuddling scene, and then he goes upstairs in the boat to do something. And she, when he comes back, she's holding a gun. She's like, "Hey, you have a gun with a silencer? That's weird." Yeah. Because she's from Colorado, so she knows everything about guns. I'm like, is that a thing? Is that a thing in Colorado? Guns? I have, all my friends in Colorado are really liberal, so I don't know. Yeah, I, me too. That's yeah. why I was like, oh, well, I mean, maybe there's some very like rural conservative areas of Colorado, but I always think of it as kind of liberal. I did, yeah. Anyway. Coloradans, let us know. Yeah. So, but she... 
she knocks him out and she gets in the little dinghy boat and gets away. I yeah. forget how she gets away, but she gets away from him. And then she crashes the boat or something. Yes. She wakes up in a Mexican hotel room. That is the funniest goddamn oh thing my God. ever. <laughs> she it was just <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, the doctors like smoke in like over, yeah. like <laughs> over her in the bed. Like <sighs> you need to rest. <laughs> Senorita, you can out for three days. I mean, just ridiculous. There's, so there's this weird thing about, so he's going to kill her, and we know he's going to kill her, like on the boat. But he still like has sex with her. And well, then, sure. And then yeah, because she's Sandra Bullock. And then he's going to kill her. And there's this kind of weird thing throughout the movie where he, when he sees her, he kind of likes to remind her, like, I'm really attracted to you. I'm like. D Oh, what? Okay. Like, but, I, but I'm going to kill you anyway. Oh, okay. Like, why does he keep bringing that up? It's so I, weird. It's very weird. It's a, it's, there's some weird choices yeah, and he, made here. And there's, they're out to dinner at one point and like a waitress takes like a Polaroid picture of them together and he's carrying it around like they're going steady. He's like, got <laughs> it in like the visor on his car, you know, and looking at it. And I'm like, are I don't know if we're, is there supposed to be like a thing where we're supposed to think that maybe he is like, is kind of into her or something, but he's still going to kill her. I don't know what's going on there, but it seems like this really weird thing. Like It's just a weird thing. And I don't, I, I, I felt the same way. Like, yeah. He's just super attracted to her and it sucks that he has to kill her, but he's got to kill her. So that's what he has to do. Yeah. So she goes back to the, it's a very strange thing because she goes back to the hotel says hi angela she says her name over and over again yes. so all the angela bennett's in the world at the time must have had a really like, hard time Ugh. thank you <laughs> but she's like i'm angela bennett and the guy check out the hotel goes no you're not you've already left and she's like no and so she's trying to get out of mexico to go back to cal go back to california and basically is told by some government official like you know your name is ruth mark so sign here and say your name is ruth mark so you can go home and she has no any credit cards. She doesn't have a driver's license. She has nothing. So she signs the thing, goes back home. Get, I mean, somehow gets on the plane. I guess she had the ticket, a hard copy of the ticket. Uh, but she gets home, and then her car is no longer in the airport mm -hmm. at the at the airport at the airport car garage thing. Anyway, she goes home, and her home is cleared out because somebody's gonna sell it. Yeah. What I know. So, in the three days she was gone, I'm like, "Good job." Have you? Has anyone in real life tried to sell a house? It doesn't go that fast. No, <laughs> even in a hot market, it's it... all empty. Mm -hmm. It had all of her shit, and it's gone. And then the cops come over, and she's arguing with like, "No, I'm Angela Bennett." They're like, "No, you're Ruth Marks." And of course, Ruth Marks, and it comes up on the computer has STDs. What? <laughs> what? I saw that too. I was like, why is that in her police report? Like, by the way, her last uh, yearly exam came back abnormal and she has an STD and, you know, she, and she is overdue for uh, a dentist appointment. Like, why is that all in her police report? It's like prostitute, uh, you know, larceny, and then venereal disease like and all these like words like pop up like what like why is that in there why is it in there but then she runs away from the cops mm -hmm. and then basically it's a cat and mouse be between her and uh, what is his name jack this is the oh. third movie by the way in yeah. a row that the guy is named jack i know jack there's lots of jacks in sandra bullock's life it's uh, like the last three it was speed yeah uh while you were, you were sleeping, sleeping and then here yeah Actually, yeah. and they all came out like, oh my God, they all came out in 95, right? Yeah, all around the same time. Oh yeah. My, every, this must have been really easy for her then. Just yell Jack and run. I just, yeah, <laughs> I mean, oh my God. And then they, so they have this cat and mouse thing where her entire life, because, because let's, once again, she has a mother that doesn't remember who she is. Mm -hmm. She has no friends. Nobody, she doesn't have a dentist, she yeah. doesn't have a hairdresser. She doesn't have, I mean, not one friend in the whole world that yeah. knows what she looks like. Well, Nobody. She mentions her dad. 
And you then know? it just says, no, and now it's not around. like, no. And it's like, he'd still know who you were though, right? Yeah. Like, seems like an emergency. Maybe you want to contact your dad. <laughs> like, or maybe she doesn't know where he is. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, what about but that? She... What about that college boyfriend you slept with that you casually met that was like brought up during your awkward cuddle <laughs> session? Like he might know who you are. I don't know. There's nobody except. Yes. Uh, here we go. So <laughs> here we go. Dennis Miller. Who's playing Dennis Miller? Yeah. But he was her therapist and boyfriend. Yeah. That's not very cool. No. And that, married. That seems like really. And he's married. He was married. Yeah. Oh. At the time. Oh, my God. I. It's actually one of the I wrote in my notes. That's the most unbelievable part of this movie to me is that Sandra Bullock would hook up with Dennis Miller. <laughs> yeah. They look very awkward together. If yeah. you told me they were work buddies, I would say, OK. Yeah. But the fact that that's her ex-boyfriend. Yeah. Slat, well, lover, I guess, slash psychiatrist. Yeah. yeah I, I don't buy him in any of those roles. I, I'm sorry. I, there doesn't seem to be anything romantic about Dennis Miller to me. And it's not like, right. oh, it's because he's super conservative now. No, this was me at the time thinking that too. I'm like, there's nothing appealing about Dennis Miller in that way to me. Like, I used he's to very think, smug. Yeah, I I thought he was very funny on SNL. Like, same you know, here. I I actually thought him doing the news was really really funny, and like he was very good at that. Um, but he's just not a movie star. He's not really an actor i don't think it's not his jam that's fine it's not everybody's thing yeah yeah but he's her her boyfriend and then so he buys her an outfit she had like one outfit well he says it's um, his ex-wife's clothes and i was oh, like right i was like super cool that they're the exact same size <laughs> <laughs> do you think they got her extra underwear like she's with in that outfit the whole time yeah I anyway don't know, or maybe she's not wearing any at all Oh, there you go. Because he's a dude, and he wouldn't think about shit like that. Oh, that poor thing. I know. So, so she's in a hotel room with him, and then he's going to go off and, and help her, and he gets medication, and somehow in the hospital, they switch it up. He gets in an accident because they give him the wrong medication mm -hmm. because there's that nefarious that they could go to the exact pharmacy that he's going to be at at that time and yeah, give him the wrong medicine. They're constantly hacking into random computers and like fucking with things like that. So they're like changing the prescription that he's getting or I think they were trying to track her mother, but he was able to move her mother before then or just anytime she makes a call, they're like hacking in and tracing her. They're very, very busy. <laughs> yes, they're very busy. And they so they take... Dennis Miller winds up in the hospital, and then Sandra Bullock, uh, she goes out, she comes back, and they, of course, in the hospital, they say he's diabetic, and they give him a, the wrong medicine, and he yeah. dies. And just at the point that he's dying, Sandra Bullock comes back into the hospital, doesn't just come into the hospital, yeah. she goes right into that room while mm -hmm. everybody else is operating on him. Yeah. She's like, hey, what's going on here? It's like, what are you doing? Like, they can't just, like, bust in like that. But he fucking dies. Yeah. So then he's gone. So she really realizes that she's out of luck. And she is being chased by uh, Jeremy Northam. She gets a call. She gets a phone. He calls her cat and mouse, cat and mouse, all the way up the West Coast until she gets to San Francisco. Because yes. that's the home office where the gatekeeper is. Yeah. There's also a whole thing where she tries to track down someone from the chat room named Cyberbob. Yeah, poor Cyber Bob. We never see, we never meet Cyber Bob, but she makes a, a kind of a date with not a date, but like they're going to meet at the Ferris wheel at the Santa Monica Pier cuz she thinks he can mm -hmm. help her and then Jeremy Northam's character tracks down Cyber Bob and goes to his apartment and I was like it's so convenient that Cyber Bob has like his like chat avatar <laughs> as a sticker on the apartment the yeah, on the button for his apartment buzzer so that he knows exactly which person to kill. You know? That's exactly. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, okay. So then she's at the Santa Monica Pier at the Ferris wheel waiting for Cyber Bob and Jeremy Northam shows up and he's like accosting her and telling her how attractive she is, but he's going to kill her. <laughs> and then I, I love this because I, I kind of like it when mascots like get hurt. 
when people are wearing <laughs> mascot costumes and like someone's dressed as like a giant bunny or whatever and like kind of interrupts them and he like knocks the rabbit down and she gets away and I was like see not all heroes wear capes you guys sometimes they wear <laughs> mascot outfits <laughs> But the whole thing, like the every time they do a merry-go-round, yeah, kind of scene, like that's been done to death. I mean, it has. But he tries to shoot her with a silencer on the merry-go-round, and it's it's all this trouble to get Angela. She winds up in San Francisco. I guess she she just hops out of a truck, like the truck driver picked her up and I took her. So. She hitchhiked. I hope she's okay. Yeah. But she goes to the office, and she's allowed to go into the office. No security. Mm-hmm. And then there's a woman that's saying her, that says she's Angela Bennett, but that woman is actually Ruth Marks. Yes. And so she's like, "Hey, Angela, what the? What are you doing? What are you? What? Are, what's, what's going on here?" Angela immediately just jumps onto somebody's computer. Yes. Doesn't raise any kind of alarms for the people around. Mm-hmm. Just this woman just shows up and just starts messing with the computer. She sets it up so that the fire alarm goes off. And they, so that everybody else leaves except for her. They don't clear her from the floor, yes. but she's able to go into there and fi- figure out what's going on. And then by the time she, they come back, she conveniently leaves. She puts on a fireman's outfit to yes. get away because Jeremy Northam's going in. So she's walking away at it. I mean, that I was cracking up. And then they go to the Moscone center and there's a big Mac convention, or is it a like a some sort just of a, some computer. electronics convention? Yeah. yeah. And she can just walk right in, mind mind you, mm-hmm. like no security. Winds up on a stage and just starts fit, futzing around with a computer. Yeah. <laughs> and like nobody's stopping her. No salespeople are trying to sell her some crap. Dude, I mean, I, I can't, can't even conventions. Walk, I can't even walk by an Apple store without somebody like coming out of the actual Apple store and going, "Can I help you?" Like, yeah. <laughs> Like, yeah. no, I'm walking by. I'm not even going in. <laughs> I, have you ever worked a convention? It's really boring sometimes, but you have to just say over and over again, you have to talk to people. Yes. But but she's found this one lone computer nobody's using. Mm-hmm. And so she's able to take the disk and put it in there and then email the shit to the FBI. Yeah. And then Jeremy Northam gra- kind of grabs her and takes her and goes, yeah, too bad we're going to kill you anyway because blah, blah, blah. I can't understand it. Yeah. Then there's a chase scene back of the Bosconi Center. She gets away with him, gets away from him, and she manages to kill him with a fire extinguisher. Yeah, yeah. like hits him in the head with it a couple of times, and then he falls yeah. over a, a ledge, kind of like, uh, like Super Mario Brothers style, and falls to his death. Yes. It's... Yeah, actually, I guess we're supposed to think it's really like awesome, but I was like, that's kind of anticlimactic, actually. I like. I, did, it more I thought if, so too. If she like speared him through the gut and it like stuck him to a computer or something, and then she's like, "Now you're jacked in" or something like <laughs> that. <laughs> I thought she'd spray him with him and then shove him. Yeah, I think just, that would be more exciting. Yeah, it's just kind of wah wah. Yeah. And he falls over and he dies. Mm -hmm. And basically she gets her identity immediately. She gets her identity back. Everything's cleared up. And then she's back in her house, all furnished again. And her poor mother was Alzheimer's. Yeah. (laughs) It's doing uh, outside uh, planting stuff. Yeah. She put her Uh, mom to work (laughs) as her gardener. No, I'm kidding. Well, I mean, yeah. And, and it's kind of sad. I mean, her mom comes up like, hey, miss, can you uh, tell me? And she says to her, oh, uh, let me show you how to do that. And you're getting the idea that Angela's going to take better care of her mother. She's going to be a little more engaged mm-hmm. there. She's going to be more engaged as a yeah. person. And then, and, oh, go ahead. That's it? Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, and then after that, her mother passes away and she moves to Chicago and gets a job as a toll booth operator. <laughs> And that's when she meets Bill Pullman, the other Jack. <laughs> She's very good at playing lonely people, isn't she? She, I mean, as somebody who's as attractive yeah. and charismatic as she is, she's awful lonely. Yeah. <laughs> I like to pretend that this is a prequel to While You Were Sleeping. I like it as a prequel. I'm, I'm, I'm going with that from now on. That's my thing. I have to say, I don't understand the plot. I don't understand... <laughs> 
I've read it on Wikipedia twice. I'm not going to watch it again. This is not like disclosure. I'm not going to watch this again. Right. I don't understand it. I don't, un I don't understand why they had to kill her. I don't understand why she doesn't have one friend. It's the same thing with while you were, no, not while you were sleeping. What's the Julia Roberts movie? My best friend's wedding. It's the same thing. Cameron Diaz. How does she not have any friends? Like, yeah. I don't understand. This is a movie in the movie world. Women like this can have zero people in their lives that know them. I don't know. It's it, the plot doesn't make much sense to me either, to be honest. Um, I can't see myself really going back to it over and over, but I do love Sandra Bullock. <laughs> oh, she's great. She's the best part of it. For sure. And this movie really rides on how much you love Sandra Bullock. And, how, and how safe you want her to be, which yeah. is, you know, everyone should love her and everyone should want her to be safe. Yeah. If you don't, you're a monster. You are a total effing monster. <laughs> so we need to form a prayer circle around her, make sure she's okay. I mean, uh, but we need her yeah. to be okay right now. We really do. <laughs> we really do. I, Jeremy Northam's really good. You know, I know Hollywood was kind of trying to make him be a thing, and I just don't know if he, he's just not that kind of actor, but he is very handsome. Yeah. And I know he was in, like, the remake of Emma with Gwyneth Paltrow, and he was good in that. I. I, I think he was in Gosford Park, maybe? I was just going to say Gosford Park. Which that's where I know him from. I haven't seen that since the theater. And at the time, I didn't really appreciate it as much as I might now. I actually should revisit because... I thought I, it was super boring. Okay. I'm not alone. When I saw no. it in the theater, I thought it was super boring. And everyone else I saw it with loved it. Loved it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God. What... What did I miss? Why don't I love this? And I wonder now if I would like it more. Maybe I, maybe I wasn't I mature a, enough at the time. I don't know. It's not a movie theater kind of movie. It's a movie that like if you're flipping channels yeah. and it's on PBS and it's late and you're just kind of settled in, you could take it in. It's it's a little more palatable. Yeah. I just I yeah I thought it was very boring when I saw it in the movie theater because it was af it's Robert Altman but it's after like player and shortcuts and okay, I, thought, I remember the fashion one that he did Predator that, that was not good oh god that's a terrible movie it was not good but those two are really good and i really enjoyed those and i mm -hmm. this one that one didn't click for me but i wonder if it would now but that's a whole other thing welcome to my podcast about gosford park and why i haven't <laughs> revisited <laughs> It's got good people in it. I mean, yeah. Diane Baker as the mom is really good. And Ken Howard, he's the guy that commits suicide or yeah. dies by suicide, excuse me, at the top of the show. I mean, there's some good people here, but I just, uh, I don't understand it. I don't understand what the thing is that it does and then why she's so important and why kill her. And I don't get it. Yeah. No. And I don't care. I don't, like, I, I the plot is just the thing to get Sandra Bullock running around. Yeah, it's it's kind of the whole plot is basically a MacGuffin. <laughs> yes, which you know is fine. Like those those movies are good. It's like a good like TNT movie. You know, it's on and you're like, hey, yeah, and that's on. It's fine. If you have something else to do and then it's on, like you're folding laundry or something. It's totally fine. Yeah. But I, I don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's the technology. It's, it's 25 years ago. Yeah. So we have to kind of give it a little bit of a break. But it's so funny how they keep talking like, everything's on the internet. Don't you get it? Like, it's, it's all there. It, and it's not even close to what it is right now. There's right. a lot of, there's a lot of hef heavy lifting in this movie to convince you that her, world is online and that's why she's all alone and you wouldn't have to do that now like they could remake this actually they probably have like remade versions of this movie mm -hmm. um and it would be way easier like because remote work is way more common we willingly put our personal shit on facebook for everyone to see like it's a much different time now where at the time you know, you would have to go into a chat room and engage with her to get personal information. Yeah. Did you ever go into chat rooms? Oh, yeah. Back in the day? Yeah, I used to go to AOL chat rooms. Yeah. I did too, but I don't 
remember really what I talked about, to be honest. I think I had like like a few. It's, but this is the year I moved to New York, ninety five, and so I think I, I you know I was just like starting to make friends and stuff like that. But I I sure, certainly had like downtime, and now when I have downtime, I just use my phone. Yeah, you know, you scroll through it. But then, and I had two roommates, and so it was like every time you wanted to use go on the net, you had to get a modem, and oh we had to take, take it off the phone. Yeah, we had to take turns. Yes, yeah, same yeah. here. Like I, I want to use it now. You need to get off. It's my turn. <laughs> or somebody would get a phone call and it would mm-hmm. knock you off. Oh my you know, they, oh god, that drove me crazy. I'm trying to remember what I went into chat rooms for. I'm sure they were like very themed type things. So it's like you would go in and talk about movies with people, or you anyone mm-hmm. here watch the net? You would go in there, or <laughs> you know, music ones or comedy ones. But then I know that there were like you know private ones you could like go into private rooms with people and i'm sure there were ones that were dirty (laughs) (laughs) i never did the dirty ones that i didn't do those but i I, i've been also but i know friends who have yeah and i'm not lying i'm not trying to like cover for myself i really didn't do that because i had roommates and yeah same here like why are you on the phone all day because i'm in dirty chat rooms (laughs) (laughs) Do you mind? <laughs> I remember, I think it was in 2001, um, finally went wireless. Like I, I, I had the high speed mm-hmm. internet and how much that changed my life. Yeah. Yeah. I think smartphones are like, I, like when I met, I, I was just thinking about this the other day. When David and I met, we met in the late, late 2008. I still had a flip phone. Mm-hmm. Like that you could text on, like one of those pink razor phones that you would text, and we would text, and texting was a pain in the ass. Oh God, do you remember? Because you had to like sit there and like hit the the keys, so it was like one one one, trying to get to like C one one. <laughs> like you know, it was just like <laughs> such a pain in the ass. It's it's crazy how much it's changed in a short amount of time. I've, I finally discovered on my phone that you could just talk into it. I don't have to write anything out, except that now it looks like I like rambling sentences when I talk to people. <laughs> I have to keep reminding myself, new paragraph, new paragraph. Yeah, I need to I need to experiment more with that because this is our new normal, and we're gonna be we're all gonna be Angela Bennett. So <laughs> yeah, I need to find ways to communicate and move things along a little faster. So maybe I'll play around with that this weekend. I'll send you some tests and you can laugh as it changes all my words to like fuck and dick and shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what happened, but Sonia just texted me fuck dick shit. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to hear some other movies that came out in 95? Yeah, of course. Okay, we've done a couple of 95 movies, so I didn't do the top 10. It's just some random movies. Um, Before Sunrise. Love Before Sunrise. I love it too. Ethan Hawke was like every like every woman's like crush at that time. He was all grungy oh. and greasy and hot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It's such a good movie. I actually, I really like all three of those movies. I think they're really interesting. Same. Um, but Before Sunrise is the one you go back, probably everyone goes back to the most because it's the most hopeful and romantic, I think. Um, Billy Madison came out in 95. Okay. Billy, I think Billy Madison's really funny, actually. I'll, I'll stand by that one. Muriel's Wedding. Muriel's Wedding is such a funny movie yeah. because it's, it's pitched to you as a comedy with ABBA songs. Yes. And it turns into the most depressing <gasps> as fuck film ever. I didn't understand what I was seeing the first time I saw Muriel's Wedding. Because I was like, this movie's really funny. And then all of a sudden I was like, what the fuck is happening? It, like- <laughs> it is so goddamn depressing in the middle part yes. of it. Like a girl just becomes paralyzed yes. out of nowhere. And, yes. And then she's going to marry a guy that doesn't love her. Yeah. and. Oh, it's so and then she like crazy. Yeah, and she doesn't let her mom come to the wedding because it's, she's like embarrassed. I don't. It, there's a lot of fucked up shit in that movie. 
it's so freaking dark. Yeah. It's a lot darker than you think. I mean, they sold it to us anyway in America. Yeah. They sold it to us as like this really fun romp from Australia, yes. you know, because remember there was Strictly Ballroom. There's yeah. like a few like Australian comedies. I was like, oh, this will be like that. And I like ABBA music. This will be fun. And it, I remember just being a, every once in a while that movie, I'll catch it on TV. I'm like, oh, that's right. This is a bummer. Yeah. It was my introduction to Tony Collette and she's rad. She is. And, uh, and I still say sometimes, I'll go, you're terrible, Muriel. Like, <laughs> oh, you're wicked, Muriel. <laughs> uh, Braveheart came out in 95. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't revisited that one, but uh, I liked it at the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Batman Forever mm. with Val Kilmer as Batman. I'm like, eh, I've, been think- I've been thinking about Val Kilmer lately because we talked about him yeah. last week. And he has a biography that's coming out. And it's called "I'm Your Huckleberry." Oh, <gasps> shut up! Yeah, that they've been uh, really, that on People Magazine must have got the exclusive. They've been just talking to him, and uh, he did indeed have cancer, throat cancer, yeah. but he says he's cancer free now. But, oh, I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, same here. Uh, we're doing like a movie like recommendation club at work, and I recommended Real Genius, and oh. it um. Some people actually took me up on that one and they were pleasantly surprised. They had never seen it. And they're like, it's super 80s because it's got all these 80s montages and stuff. And I was like, yeah, that's why it's great. And it's a rare 80s comedy that doesn't involve sexual assault. You're welcome. Enjoy. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and real jokes that, la- that, that like still last. Yeah. yeah. I, I was really glad to see that people actually took me up on that wreck. Uh, Showgirls came out in 95. <laughs> Speaking of comedies. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very unintentionally funny movie and it holds up. Yeah, I haven't rewatched that one in a long time, but maybe we should rewatch it sometime. We should probably do it, yeah. Yeah, I think that one would be popular. People, maybe we need this right. Maybe Showgirls is the movie we need right now. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth Berkley, Gina Gershon, yeah. I'm in. Yeah, Elizabeth Berkley got a lot of shit for that movie. She didn't deserve that shit, but. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we'll put that on the list. To Die For came out in 95. I love To Die For. That's such a good movie. Really, yeah. really good. If you guys haven't seen To Die For, it's worth it. Uh, Mall Rats. <laughs> Mall Rats. Oh, God. <laughs> such a strange movie. This was like this was Kevin Smith's follow-up to Clerks. And at the time, I remember seeing it and being kind of disappointed and then watching it later and... I think that's one that grows on you. There's funny parts. There's funny parts to it. Yeah. But yeah, it's Jason Lee. Is that his, is, is that yeah. Jason Lee? Yeah. It's his first movie. He was a skateboarder. Yeah. So he eventually, when he was at, what was the, what was the TV show he did? Oh, my name, my is, name Earl. is Earl. He was great on that. I, I think he just, he, he didn't have any acting skills yet. Yeah. So he was just learning. Yeah. I, I loved my name is Earl. The, I, I loved that show. The idea of someone going around trying to do good things. Maybe they sh- they need to start streaming that somewhere, yeah. make it a little bit more widely available. We could use that right now. But the big selling point of that movie at the time was actually S- Shannon Doherty was in it. Yes! Because, but it had all these other people. So it had Jason Lee, it had Ben Affleck, and like all these other people that would go on to like be like bigger stars or whatever. But S- Shannon Doherty was kind of the, the big name in that movie. Uh, 12 Monkeys came out in 95. Oh, God. I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> I haven't seen that in a long time, but I remember thinking Brad Pitt was really good in it. Mm-hmm. And, it and it's got Madeline Stowe. What happened? Where did Madeline Stowe Where did was, she go? She was in a TV show a couple years ago. What was that, like, super soapy? There was, like, some, like, nighttime soap opera type thing, and she was in it, and people really loved her in it. Shit, I can't remember the name of it. Now I have to look it up. What was it? Ugh. Madeline Stowe. <laughs> I remember her from Stakeout. She was in Stakeout, and she was in that movie Revenge with and Kevin Costner. And also Bad Girls. Bad oh, Girls. yeah. Yeah, she was a thing. She was a thing. Uh Oh, and she was in Last of the Mohicans, which we have done an yep. episode on. Uh, You weren't in that episode, but we did. Do no, it. it was the old days. Yeah, that was the old days, but that was a good one. Revenge. That was the name of the TV show on like ABC or something. Anyway, Madeline Stowe. 
And then the last one I wrote on my list was Nixon. <laughs> oh, God. Is that Anthony Hopkins' yes. Nip- Nixon? Yeah. Oh, that's an Oliver Stone movie. Yeah, it's a big old mess. Yeah, I've only seen it once. I, I wasn't impressed. Are you ready for some top songs? Yep. All right, top songs in 1985. Like we said, we've we've done this year before, so I try to pick some new ones here. Mariah Carey, One Sweet Day. That's a good song. Yeah. Alanis said, Hand in My Pocket. That's a great that song. song. That album. Is oh, just, so good. Yeah. Uh, Smashing Pumpkins, Bullet with Butterfly Wings. That's a good song, too. Good song. Uh, Collective Soul, December. <laughs> I can't tell Collective Soul songs from Candlebox songs. <laughs> they all sound the same. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no Doubt, Just a Girl. Oh, that was such a huge hit. That was a bit. And then Shaggy, Boombastic. <laughs> Oh my God, that song! That's so funny. Oh, I, that, you couldn't get away from that one either. Yeah. Uh, what else are you dorking out about? So I was looking for last night for something to you know just to take us away from everything that's going on, and Amazon has gifted us with a new show, and it's called Making the Cut, oh. and it's Heidi Klum uh-huh. and Tim Gunn <gasps> back together. They're back together. The band is back together. And they, it's another, it's just like the Project One Runway that they did on Bravo, fr- frankly. It's a, it's another competition show and it's a fashion one. The people are really talented. I like this because in this show, they have seamstresses already. So you don't have to watch them all night on a sewing machine, which would like with Project mm-hmm. Runway after a while, it's like, this person can't sew. So we can't, you know, they can't win. I'm like, well, Sewing isn't the whole job. I mean, right. designing is, you know, but anyway. I like, they have that's it. a good idea. I'm glad they're yeah. doing that. Yeah. So, well, except, well, the last challenge, they had to sew their own stuff, but like mm-hmm. half of it was a big old mess. And that's the reason why, like, I don't want to watch them sew. I don't care if they can sew. I want to watch them design. That's the thing that's exciting for me. But the first few episodes take place in Paris and they're by the Seine mm-hmm. and they are, it's just gorgeous, gorgeous locations. And the 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 uh, the judges. One of the judges is Naomi Campbell. Oh, and she is the biggest bitch on wheels, but she's right. <laughs> she's absolutely okay. right. Like she t- she draws no quarter here. If she's got a problem with what you're doing, she'll tell you right to your face. You're like, I couldn't put that on if I had to take that jacket off and put it back on and quickly and do this. I wouldn't be able to do it. No, <laughs> it's like, okay, you're, you're right. All right. Do they yeah. do they make all the designers live together and create all this manufactured drama or no? No, they get their own rooms. Okay, that also makes me more interested. It was the drama of Project Runway didn't interest me as much, and I found it to be uh, distracting from the part I actually really liked. So I stopped watching. It was good the first few years. Yeah, that, I used to watch it all the time. Yeah, I I did too, and it, and it's like that with Top Chef. It's like I just want to see them create. Yeah, I don't care if they don't get along in the kitchen, like they're arguing over who didn't fill the coffee maker or something right. like that. Like, I don't give a shit. Yeah, just get to the design. But that's the stuff that that the producers want to promote. Yeah. Um, here it's just they're just really talented people, and it's like they they have their own rooms, and it's like yeah. thank God, let them just have their downtime. And they're very, and that makes them more supportive of one another, yeah. which is what I want to see. I don't want to see them sniping maybe, at each other. I want, they, uh, they learn something know? from Great British Baking Show, maybe. Like, yes. I just want to see people bake and do what they do best. I don't care about whether or not they get along. Really, right. I don't, I don't want to hear about your personal conflicts. I just want to see, I, the, I'll go to Real Housewives for that. Right. <laughs> That's fine. So that's a good pick. I'm going to put it on my list. I bet David will watch that with me. We used to love Project Runway back in the day. Yeah. I mean, the stuff with Heidi and Tim, like the inter- little interstitials that they do, they're not, that's not that great, but they're, they're thankfully not that many of them. Yeah. But, but Tim Gunn remains like a very charming yes. host and, and, and he's always so supportive of people and the locations, like I said, are beautiful. They're in Paris and now this time they're in Tokyo. So they're going to really cool places hmm. and it's just nice escapism. Yeah. I I will definitely watch that when I decide to finally get back to watching TV, which brings <laughs> me to what I'm dorking out about. 
Margo and I have talked about this already off mic and she is going to laugh at me, but I am obsessed and cannot stop playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> um, David bought this video game. If you guys don't know what Animal Crossing is, you basically make a character and it you move to an island and then there's some animals that live on the island too like people animals kind of like a bojack horseman situation they like walk around and they talk and stuff and you just kind of like engage with those animals you fish you garden you sell things to make money and then you can like expand your house and you're building like a community on this island and i find it very very distracting when i need it the most it's very relaxing <laughs> the the as someone who so this is where i start really dorking out okay so <laughs> my day job is to write ux content which is when you go into like a product and you're engaging with a product or a shopping cart or something like that i would write those words i would design that flow for you I'm very fascinated by the UX content of Animal Crossing and how they provide the information you need when you need it. And they do it in like a really fun way with the way the animals talk to you. Uh, I just seriously dorking out about Animal Crossing and David and I play it together, like at the same time sometimes. And we just like run around this island and like fish together and like get their <laughs> shells and like, you know, and, and there's just like a lot of like, no, I already have that. You can have it. Oh, that it's your turn. Ha ha. And like, we just run around and play. We're having the best time. And like Calvin's been playing it now too. And it's been really great for Calvin because it encourages reading because the animals don't really talk. They're like, blah, 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 blah. and then it, the words show up on the screen. So you have to read it. So he's reading it. It's good for like his hand eye coordination. It's really, it's such a charming little game. And if you want, you can connect it online so you could play with other people in other places, which is really good timing. This is like a brand yeah. new game. It just came out a couple of weeks ago. Everyone's talking about it. And so, you know, if Margot was playing, like, we could, like, visit each other's islands and, you know, stuff like that. It's really cute. It's very cute. And I just oh. find it very distracting, which is what I need right now. Yeah, we all do. Well, what, So what do you, how do you play it? I mean, is what kind of a game is it? It's on the Nintendo Switch. So you have to have a Nintendo to play it? Yeah. See, I don't have that. Yeah, it's. It's not like an online where you play on your computer. You play it on the Nintendo Switch or you hook up your Switch to your TV, which is how we play it. I find that I, as I love movies and TV shows. You guys know this. Obviously, I have a show where we talk about that stuff. But I also can get very easily distracted by my phone when I'm watching things and I can read mm -hmm. headlines and things, which I'm trying not to do before bed it makes for no. a better it makes for a better sleep if i don't acknowledge the real world <laughs> and animal crossing is really good at that so that's kind of what i'm dorking out about but it's 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 fun and maybe i'll post some pictures online it's kind of funny uh you get kind of random presents sometimes when you're on the island and it actually sent me a microphone Ooh, that's a good that's a good gift and for I you. I was like, "Are you kidding me? Animal Cross? That's some like net shit right there. It's spying on me." <laughs> I was like, "How did Animal Crossing know that I host podcasts?" And it sent me a microphone. I thought it was amazing and hilarious. Well, do you ever do? Do you ever send a G? Uh, you know, you do a Google search, yeah. And then the next thing you know, like ads are popping up for the thing you were just looking at. Yes. I mean, yeah, we are living in the net. We are the bringing it back circle, full yes. circle. The the al the algorithm on Instagram is like chef's kiss. Like it's always like <laughs> you would like these shoes. I'm like you are right. I would like those shoes. <laughs> you would like this dress. I totally would. You yeah. would like these pup socks. Yep. Yes, I would like those pup socks. Yeah, the, a <laughs> lot of I get a lot of dresses with like cats on them or yep. dogs. Um, things like that yeah and I was like you're right Instagram I'm not gonna buy it but thanks for showing it to me I appreciate it <laughs> <laughs> this was fun I'm glad we talked about the net me too uh, where can people find you on the internet Margo where can they find you on the net on the net 
On social media, you can find me at Brooklyn Fitchick. That's mostly for Twitter and Instagram. And my blog is brooklynfitchick.com. And we also co-host another podcast, if you can't get enough of us, called What a Creep, where we talk about a creep. And then we end every episode with someone who's not a creep. Mm -hmm. And we have a Patreon page. You could go to What a Creep. Uh, I think it's just called What a Creep on Patreon, but also... You know, just look for What a Creep wherever you listen to podcasts. It's super fun. Join us. Please. Please. Uh, you can find me at thesoniashow.com and the Sonia Show on Twitter and Instagram where I post pictures of all the bread I'm baking, all my anxiety baking. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find Dorking Out uh, at dorkingout.com, Dorking Out Show on Twitter, and sometimes on Instagram, but almost never on Facebook. Um and if you could go into Apple Podcasts and give us a review, that would be awesome. It helps us find our people. And you have been doing that. I su I'm super grateful. And if you do it, we'll start giving some shout outs on the air because I think we should be giving people shout outs when they go through all the trouble because Apple Podcasts does not make it easy. And also, if you guys want some stickers, yes. uh, send us a, you know, drop in our DMs or send an email. Was it Dorking Out Show? Yeah, Dorking Out. Gmail? Yep, Dorking Out Show at Gmail. Com. We'll put we'll drop some stickers in the mail for you. Yeah. You have to reach out to us through the net. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for talking about the net with me, Margo. It was a total blast, Sonia. Yeah. As always. Always. Now let's go listen to some Mozart's Ghost, <laughs> the hottest band on the internet. <laughs> <laughs>